Hey creative friends, it's Gwen with you back with another scrapbooking process video and today's share is for Coco Vanilla Studio and I'm using their Daydream collection and the idea for the page actually began with these fussy cut flowers which I have cut from the garden variety pattern paper so that one there uh, yeah I just sat in front of the telly and, and cut out a bunch of those and I am making, I want to say, page number three with the collection. So I'm getting familiar with uh, what's in there and, and really enjoying using it. I also wanted to show you really quickly how I keep track of which titles I've used. So the packaging there lists out all the titles that you get and I just cross them off as I go. So yeah, lots of pretty goodies. I've got, yeah, um, the die cuts, the accessory stickers and all of the pretty pattern papers. Now this is the photo that I'll be using today. It's of Caitlin and it was taken earlier this year. And I'm also going to be using this cut file. It's called Rainbow Love and it's from my cut file shop, Cut To You. And I have gone ahead off camera and backed it. Now I've used the Sweet Serenity pattern paper for that. It has this lovely black and white spot on the B side and then the mixed media style pattern on the A side. And the, it's my favorite paper of the whole collection because I'm not a mixed media gal, but it's a way that I can get pretty watercolors and that, that mixed media feel on my page. So I really, really love those. I have also stitched around the arcs of the rainbow there in a in quite a dark pink thread and I've added foam tape behind it so all of that did take a little while. I've also backed my photo and I am pulling out a bunch of elements that are going to be from that fussy cut pattern paper. Now I've popped it all onto that background pattern paper which is actually called Sun Shower and it is the sweetest little raindrops ever and yes I am still on my pattern paper background kick. I think the Coco Vanilla collections are actually a really lovely mix of patterns that are a little bit more busy or bolder and then a mix of patterns that are not that busy so that you can use them for your backgrounds. You don't have to put them on white all the time or like a plain cardstock. Yeah, so I'm really loving that. So yeah, I mentioned before the photo was taken earlier this year. It's of Caitlin on a balcony in a high rise in Surface Paradise. And she's actually looking out over the ocean. So uh, on my pages, when I have photos like this, I like the subject matter to be looking in towards the center of the page. So for me, that meant that the photo had to go somewhere there on the left which actually helped because that's one less decision that I have to make. And yeah, and that's one more step towards the design of my layout. It's, yeah, it's not wrong to have it on the right and to have her looking off the page. And I've seen beautiful pages like that. It's, it's really just a personal choice thing. And it's the way that I like um, to have them positioned. And you can see that that's sort of the, the pretty much the design of the layout. So We've got, we've got the layout bones in place, I know where I'm going, I have a plan and that's always a really good thing. So I am going to start the, um, the, the bases of my clusters with those fussy cut florals and I am, they're not stuck down so I am kind of cheating here and just adding a little bit of tape there to lock that floral on the left into position. So I have only un, unstuck, that's not a word, I have only removed the tape on the back of the photo to that for that left hand edge so far and because I want to just be sure about the position of the florals there at the bottom so I do fuss with that just a little. Once I'm happy I just add a spot of glue just to hold it into position and I had this grand plan of just being able to whip the tape off the back of the photo and press it all down but <laughs> I, I for the life of me I could not get the backing off of that tape so I had to pull everything off the, the page that wasn't stuck down flip it over and really wrangle it I don't know what was happening I was just having a moment but yeah so I, I thought you'd like you'd enjoy that I left that in 
So now it's time for me to try and figure out where everything was before and yeah, get it back into the position where I was liking it. So no, I do manage to do that. There was only, I was lucky actually, there was only maybe five or six elements. So I, I could cope with that. So, so yeah, um, now this collection does not have a lot of uh, chipboard. Actually, it has no chipboard in it. So I am going to be making my own chipboard-esque elements. And I'm going to do that by using 3D foam. So this is my giant roll of foam tape, which I get from Bunnings. So Bunnings uh, for non-Aussies is just a big chain store that's a hardware store. Yeah. And they have this, that tape there, which I use, which is in fact actually not acid free. Is that right? Not acid free. Uh, and it's a slightly cheaper. Uh, it's not a big problem for me because I will always have uh, paper layers between my photo and the tape. Uh, but if that's a problem for you, there is an acid free, so a photo safe version of the tape, which is a little bit dearer, but Bunnings have that as well. So yeah, and that, that's actually my second roll of that tape. So it's super economical, especially, and it's a great idea, especially if you're the kind of scrapbooker that uses a lot of dimension on your pages. So yeah, I would very much recommend that. We had a lovely big chat about that really recently actually in the Cut to You HQ Facebook group. So that's uh, my Facebook group that's loosely linked to the Cut File Shop and a lot of the ladies there who use the files on their layouts will share them there. Uh, but we also talk a lot of, about general scrapbooking. So yeah, if you're not part of the group, feel free to join us. I'll leave a little link for that below. The page is coming together now and I am really, really liking where it's going and things are starting to get locked into place. I'm finding that, uh, like I really love those florals, hey. They have just been so nice to work with. I would highly recommend grabbing a couple of sheets of that pattern paper. What's it called? Where is it here? garden variety and uh, yeah just sitting in front of the telly and fussy cutting out all the florals have them there ready for when you're making I don't think I would have stopped the layout to then go away and spend 20 minutes fussy cutting I think it's far better to just like bulk cut out the whole sheet have them sitting in a pretty bowl or in a little baggie and then when you go to make you can use them like embellishments just like pretty other die like any other die cut that you would you know normally use so and speaking of fussy cutting I have also fussy cut out a couple of those pretty little moths from the pattern paper for that one oh, I've got that here what's that called all the flutter so they were really quick to cut out you probably don't need to do those ones in advance but uh, I would definitely recommend doing the florals in advance because they did take a little while. Now I will mention here while I have a moment uh, that once I had finished the video and I'd given you my little close-up of the layout I, I did actually go away and come back the next morning and I have added three stickers from the accessory sticker sheet. So my style is, is quite embellishment heavy and I am very aware that I can overdo things. So I'm very conscious of just making sure that I have that balance of all the pretty things and the elements and yeah, not, like just enough and not too much. So yeah, I, yeah, I'm sorry you didn't get to see those little bits, but you do see them in the close up still images. You can see here now that I am locking everything into place and that's how I prefer to do all of my gluing. So I don't reposition things, I get them exactly where I want and then I lift up just the top little corner or the bottom edge and, and pop just the tiniest little bit of glue underneath and yeah, lock them into position so that, yeah, I find that if I didn't do it that way, I'd go, I'd lift them off and then go to put them back on and they would not be where I want them to be. I'd never get, I'd never get them back the way that I wanted or the way that they were before. So yeah, that's how I really like to do that. 
Thanks for joining me today, creative friends. If you have any questions at all about the collection or uh, my page or uh, yeah, anything scrapbook related, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And if my page inspired you in any way, please feel free to subscribe. Yeah, I'll leave you with some close up images as always. And I will lift this up in a moment so you can see all the pretty details. Thanks for joining me, creatives. Bye.